Welcome to Opalest TV. Today I'm with Martin Estlander. Martin runs a CTA since 1991 in Finland. Martin, tell me a bit of your personal history and how you set up your company. Well, Matthias, um, it all started, I guess, back in the 80s. I was uh, studying uh, computer sciences and industrial management at the University of Technology and at the School of Economics in Helsinki, and I started trading equities. It was an attempt to, to finance the studies, which actually turned out quite well. I thought this was, was fairly easy, but only later I realized it was just because it was a roaring bull market that I had a bit of success. But anyways, I really fell in love with the financial markets and that took me further to start trading options with a partner of mine. We founded an options market making firm in Stockholm and acted as market makers for a few years. And then in 1990, with the, the quant background, I started modeling what we were doing and that sort of led to developing various kind of decision support systems and that brought me into into trends and and systematic trend-based trading and trend following strategies and I guess ever since it's been sort of a strong passion for the markets I, I'm very fond of modeling modeling solving problems to the extent that market issues can be solved but now over the last few years it's been also more, quite a bit of focus on running the business and the whole concept of asset management is also obviously the case of managing people and managing the business. So Martin, tell me, where is the company today? What type of funds do you run? What's your corporate structure? You already talked about your team, etc. So tell us more about that. Well, we are a team of 35 with uh, nine people in asset management and resting in uh, IT data collection, data management, trading execution and execution development and then obviously other supporting staff. We're managing 850 million dollars and we have three sort of main lines of uh, strategies that we focus on. Price driven, trend based, short to medium term strategies then we have systematic macro strategies, which are strategies that are basing the decision making on other factors than price. And then the third is sort of intraday short term trading uh, strategies, and we combine this in, in our various products. And we are located in Finland, as you mentioned, and I think that gives a bit of the profile as well to the company. We see ourselves as doing things our own way in a slightly different way than people do it in the main financial centers. And Finland is a very good place for us at least to act. Our business environment has been rated, top rated in the world many times. We have a very good educational system also top rated and that has given us a lot of support in finding, finding good people. And I think being off the main centers also helps us create our own very distinct corporate culture, which is an integral part of what we do and our philosophy. So Martin, obviously you have been in this industry since 91 and you know your competitors, you know your peers, be them located in London or in Chicago or anywhere in the world. Now you are one of the Nordic CTAs and one of the oldest Nordic CTAs. What sets you apart from the others? Well, I would, I would look at it from sort of two angles. First is how we run this as a business and secondly uh, relating to the strategies. And if we start with the business, I, you know, we have, I mentioned that we have a very distinct corporate culture and that has sort of helped us over the years. I think we've had a very sort of stable team, never really lost a key person from, from portfolio management and very low turnover and we've been able also to, to attract uh, very good people, both from abroad with experience as well as top academics from the universities which we've, we have very close contacts with in Finland. We've been sponsoring them since 1998 
and this cooperation has been quite fruitful, I think, for us. In terms of, of uh, the creativity and how you manage the people, we sort of have a thinking here that, that you need to inspire the people in order for them to bring out the best, to, to be creative and be committed to what they, do, what they do. And if you turn it a little bit around, you can say that it's very easy to motivate people. You just bribe them to do what you want them to do with money. But that doesn't bring sort of the essence and the long-term commitment and the creativity every day to the, to the work. And so, so we believe very strongly and have a very clear vision of what we do, very clear mission. And within these, give people a lot of latitude, a lot of responsibility to act. But the most important, I think, is to have very strong corporate values, which you have to match to the individual values. And if you get these, the corporate values and the individual values to tick, then people really start to get, get inspired and get sort of a deeper commitment to what they do. And in particular, in times of, of more challenges, more difficult time, I think it's a good way to retain people and, and uh, not be so dependent on on the financial aspects and the forthcoming bonus pay payments. So that's sort of what relates to the, to, to the business aspect and of course being in a smaller country, in a smaller city, it's also more important and easier maybe to have a very distinct corporate culture. I think it also reflects on how we manage money and our background in options trading gave us a very sort of strong focus on, on risk management. Obviously, we were trading with very thin equity in relation to the commitments that we had to make on the exchange to, to provide prices in the various products. The way we allocate risk is slightly different from, I think, the mainstream, and it all goes back to a thinking of how much money can we lose if really everything goes against us. So we don't make any sort of correlation assumptions in our risk management. Another thing that is specific about us is that we are very selective in our trading. We really look for high conviction trades that we put on. So we're, we're not as active as many others. But when we go in with more conviction, we go in faster and we might take slightly larger bets when we go in. So that gives us an opportunity to capitalize also on individual sort of a little bit more odd instruments. The way we compose our portfolio is very sort of natural resource intense. So that's the largest sort of portion because we fund that to bring the biggest sort of diversification to the portfolio. And hence uh, with this risk management approach we we can find ourselves making the most money out of in certain periods from quite old markets where uh, some of the larger managers might not be that present. So that also uh, brings in some differences. The way we enter the market, we typically try to get in very early into positions. So we typically get in earlier, but also with a shorter holding period than, than uh, most CTAs, we tend to get out of positions earlier. So that's another sort of uh, difference in how we operate. So Martin, you talked about your risk management and your approach in your portfolio construction. And my question is now, how does this show in your performance? Well, it comes through best, I guess, in terms of correlation figures, which we'll talk, it's, it's clear language. We are correlated, obviously, to CTAs, as we're being a CTA, but we're clearly sort of lower correlated to the main indices and to the main managers uh, than most of the other ones. So I, I think the correlations speak their own, own sort of language here. And also in terms of, of uh, this year, for instance, 2013, our performance has been relatively strong to the others. We're sh showing good positive numbers, which on the one hand relate to the differences in portfolio construction and how we, we sort of take on positions and 
how we allocate risk, but also to obviously the very important part of research and uh, it's all it's a continuous process of, of developing and researching, refining the models. We typically talk about refinement rather than revolution in what we do, but it's a clear result of recent research over the last few years that contribute also to outperformance um, during 2013. So Martin, who are your clients? Who is interested in your funds? Well, traditionally, family offices have been a very sort of important part of our, our clientele. Family offices that are happy to look for, for managers that are also in other locations than the main locations. And lately, however, last year or so, pension funds have shown good interest and we've had a lot of interest from, from that side. So that seems to be a more growing piece of our business. Institutions have all, always been there and is also an important part of the business. As well as, to some extent, retail through, we have a usage offering which we're committed to also for the future and that's sort of an interesting venue going forward. We're now in the middle of 2013 and this year has been a bit difficult for most of the CTAs. What's your view on the markets and how have your own funds been able to outperform in this environment? Yes, this has been a difficult year for the industry and it's the at least third consecutive difficult year for the industry. What we've seen now is that uh, some of the correlation patterns have really changed around and uh, the best sort of opportunities have really been um, coming out of this renewed correlation pattern. So we've seen sort of equities going up as we know, we've seen metals going down and this sort of relationship has been a very interesting sort of trade to trade on directly and indirectly. And I think, you know, looking at the space as a whole, what we've seen here since the financial crisis is a lot of deleveraging, we've seen a lot of government interaction, we've seen fairly high short-term volatilities, which have been sort of coming down all the time. There has been moves, but something that people tend to forget, which is not just the moves that generate the returns, but also the other side, that is the price of being in the game, which is defined by the sort of shorter term ranges in the markets. And these have been very high over the last sort of years here after the financial crisis. And that has been sort of made it expensive for CTAs to, to maintain the sort of long volatility biased exposure that we tend to have. Now, this seems to have have now come down. I mean, this, this range-bound sort of noise has actually decreased and this looks quite promising here going forward, particularly now heading into the fall. We also have low volatility, which in general we have the VIX very low and uh, this is typically an, an interesting or more interesting or favorable environment for, for CTA like long volatility biased strategies. So, I, you know, we're quite confident looking forward. and. There are other, I mean, mentioned already the correlation patterns, the classical sort of risk on, risk off. If you measure that with a principal component analysis, you can really see that it really increased a lot uh, with the financial and post the financial crisis. But that has also come down a lot, and which provides for much better diversification opportunities in the portfolio. So, you know, we are quite confident looking forward into the fall.